Hey, this is Nicholas with the Backyard TARDIS here with some more Adventures in Locksmithing. Ep number 100. Uh, this is kind of a milestone. Of course, I've kind of switched. I'm doing more shorts, just kind of doing the daily vlog. But um, I still got a lot more stories, and I want to do uh, a number of other things with hair. Some little tips, things. I'm not that skilled with a camera. I'm getting some equipment. I'm doing some stuff to better do that. But I am trying my hand a little bit at it. Um, but, you know, continue to have these stories. But I have one story that is probably one of my favorite locksmith stories of all. You know, that's something I should do. A top ten backyard TARDIS locksmith stories that I like to tell. Um, but anyways, uh, one of my favorite stories out of all of them um, has to be one... Um, we're not going to say his name, but, uh, just the first name here, uh, Jim. And Jim, uh, he was convinced, see, he had a job where he worked for uh, years as an accountant for one of the top three, uh, rice companies in the United States. And he kind of got a little senile. He got a little, um, not, not right. And so they had to let him go shortly before, uh, he was about to reach full retirement. Now, I didn't know him personally before, so I don't know if his claims of them doing that so he wouldn't get his retirement are true, and he had his break after that, or if it was the other way around. But needless to say, uh, this individual, uh, he has a whole, it's almost like loss. Like he's got a setup where he wrote them back a nasty letter telling him that he had helped them, you know, avoid the IRS for years, that he's been cooking their books for them, and he's going to expose them if they, if they try to do anything to him because, uh, and then he, he kind of noticed some stuff happening, so he set up a system where he has stuff set to go out to news outlets. If he doesn't put a code into a computer every so many hours, which, you know, eventually someday he's going to die, and these, these news articles, whether anybody will listen to him, will go out. But uh, that's his thing, is he has to, every so many hours, he has to go to a computer and type in a password into this software to prevent it from happening. Now, he's of the mind that this company has hired ex-black op individuals to make him look crazy and drive him crazy so that uh, all his word would be discredited because he will now be documented as having a mental illness. And uh, he would give us examples of how, you know, he'd wake up in the morning and he'd go to brush his teeth and his pistol would be in his toothbrush holder. And then he would go to put it away in the gun safe. And his toothbrush would be in the, the gun holder in the gun safe. Um, yeah, if, if that doesn't make you feel uneasy, <laughs> I don't know what will. Uh, but this individual, you know, he, he when he leaves his house, he locks the door. He does all these things. And uh, he then climbs out a window, and then he has a hair that he puts over the window. Uh, he takes a, a long hair and he puts it there uh, to help him know if somebody went through the window. He basically seals up his house every time he leaves. And he did research. And he went online, and he's like, I either want this or this. He either wanted uh, Schleg Primus or he wanted... Um, some medico locks and I'm like well yeah we Primus we can do but this but it's a bit expensive now we came out there in you know board and installed he didn't have devil we put the devils on but we put them all Primus switched his house now we got a call I wasn't the initial one that went out but we we did get a call a few months later uh, from the landlord when the landlord realized his keys wouldn't work the apartment anymore um, we didn't know he was renting because uh, it was kind of like a little uh, standalone studio apartment. Um, and 
so so we went down a couple of times and you know he would be every now and then he would say they're still getting in you need this and he would say well what about this i was like look <laughs> they can get in primus they're gonna get there's nothing we can put on that you're putting on more security than because you know he had an armor plating on the door all this stuff i'm like the hospital doesn't keep their narcotics locked up this tight as you have your apartment. But I remember one time we came down and he had a young couple um, who were uh, helping him. They were moving some furniture for him. He was talking about how the gentleman cuts his yard, how the, the lady uh, is cleaning his house. And... Um, she was, uh, or or the, he had met them uh, locally at the church last weekend, and uh, he mentioned that you know they were they were illegal immigrants, but uh, that they were the nicest people in that. And he had me make them copies of the key. Now the key that he got was the kind of key that requires a special ID card that's issued with the key to make more copies. This is high security. This is meant for high security individuals. It's pick proof bump proof whatever you want to call it um you know this is supposed to be the end all be all of security and and he has it on his house it's just ridiculous but he just he had only known them for a week they'd been doing his yard this uh he mentions they've they've come into the country illegally and he and he says you know what they're good honest people they can't be bought However, one of the reasons why we got this individual is because the locksmith out in the city where he lives, because it was out in Calusa, which is a little bit out of our, our range. We do cover that area, but there's a locksmith there locally. We've got a non-compete. We've bumped up our trip charge because it takes us about an hour to drive there uh, from our central spot. Um, and now where I've moved the business now, it's about an hour and 40 minutes but because uh, uh, I've moved the central spot of the business but you know it was just one of those things where it was like okay you got one local guy out there make sure he gets all first dibs and then you know only customers he doesn't want to work with or that he's not there at time pay extra but we're not stealing his business well he had his own type of restricted key that was not as advanced as prime but it was restricted key. and he just got tired of dealing with the guy and the guy would want him to meet him in like alleyways to make key copies and all this kind of stuff and so he finally told him you know what i'm done and uh i can do this for you i can do this for you but like here here is my conditions for serving you and uh so when he called us up he told us you know what so the race code they got to him you know Big business, you know, he let greed, and he would go on and on and on how about how this other locksmith was taking paychecks uh, and giving out his key to help them and all this and, and, and disrespecting the craft. So, you know, we have this guy's kind of a loon uh, in this way, and, you know, he's just going on, and but, you know, here he's, he's discrediting this other locksmith's name, his good name, but people he met last week that he admits came into the country illegally, not the people, not the person who's federally licensed, they're honest to a fault and can't be bought, and he gives these high security keys to, um, yeah, it's just, but he constantly, he would talk about the things they move around and they do and this, and he's like, oh yeah, they're getting like these ex-black ops guys from Vietnam and stuff like he just go on and on. Um, fast forward, uh, years later, he is in, um, Ubus, uh, he's moved now and he's in a mental health facility. But he calls us up and says, I'm in this new facility. They do have cameras and stuff, but you know, they can be like that. I want you to put the Primus locks on there. I pull up and I see he's at a mental health facility. I'm like, call him back up. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the place that you're at will not allow me to put these locks on your door. Uh, they have to be able to have access into your room. Uh, so, you, you know, he's always been an interesting character. Uh, and definitely one of the most lively. He will talk your ear off with stories and tales of all this stuff. Um, 
for years and there's a number of us at the shop that have had to deal with him uh my buddy Mark, he's he, he done a lot. I originally was saving the story because I wanted Mark to come on with me, and I still may have him do tell his side of the story of dealing with this individual, but uh, just because he's so interesting. But this is one of the now I've I've obviously you've heard in these stories I've had much more ridiculous stories. I've had much more ridiculous druggies and different things, um, but this this gentleman was just. Um, and in general, the fact that he had a computer, he would go and he would do that. Like, it was just a fascinating, the world that he lives in. Like, the idea of being in his mind. And, you know, a schizophrenia is really uh, something that is a difficult uh, illness to treat. Because most people with schizophrenia are paranoid of the medication. And so, even when they're doing good... And they're taking the medication, something can trigger that paranoia and they stop taking it. And then they go way off the deep end and are just surrounded by this paranoia. Of course, they also talked about the one where he ended up being right, uh, you know, so uh, that certain people were actually after him and when he wound up dead. Uh, so, you know, you have to take a ground of salt, but I, you know, uh, that rice company is my customer too, and I made sure to never let him know that because I knew that would probably be <laughs> the end of it. He would be <laughs> singing how we got bought out too. But, uh, uh, you know, you do what you can, but that, this is one of those customers that at a certain point, like he would look up stuff that we, we would have to go out and license because we don't, we don't even have like that high end of military grade, and he would want that. And I go, you do not need a twelve hundred dollar lock on your front like wooden door of your apartment. <laughs> you know that's that's ridiculous. You know we already put a three hundred dollar lock there. Like that's that's way more than you need. You don't need to go more crazy than that. <laughs> so you know it's just uh, interesting. You meet interesting people whenever you service people in their homes have a public number you meet interesting people and you know people like this is one of the reasons why i started this vlog because i tell these stories and everyone goes oh you should write a book you should write a book you know, i'm never going to have time to write a book i'm never going to be able to go through the publishing but youtube youtube i could do i could post little videos on youtube and talk about it so if you've been watching these and enjoying them thank you so much for that uh you know here's to a hundred more i think when i get to 150 maybe i'll do my top 10 um the stories locksmith stories that i uh, that i tell uh revisit some of these all right with that hope everybody's having a good day and i'll catch you in the next video